by Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities. Now, great to see you there. Yeah, what have you made of the comments that we've had through from the ratings agencies about the fiscal cliff deal? Look, I think uh, the Moody's comments are uh, uh, comments we're going to hear more of in the next few months where the pressure will be applied um, to the US to cut uh, this spending even more than they've done already. Um, there have been some commentators uh, for example, Rubini has been out uh, looking at uh, prospects for growth in the US. We're looking for around 2% for the 2013 year, much in line with what we've been looking for. And with the uh, current deal, we're going to bring that, that should be brought down very close to uh, zero by the existing uh, spending cuts now and the tax deal. But uh, if there's further spending cuts, that could easily bring uh, growth under under zero and cause some something like a recession in the US. So the, the pressure on the US is still there and there's still uh, a lot of uh, negotiating to be done to get that uh, spending uh, cut in a meaningful way. What does all of this mean then for US Treasuries too? I mean we've seen that rise in the yields uh, overnight to sort of three month highs there. Yeah. What do you, what, what's your thinking of, of where, what happens then as a result what, to the, that US government debt? Uh, US uh, 30 year bonds have gone over 3%, the nominal slightly over 3%. I think that re remains an excellent buying level for um, longer term investors. Provides a great hedge against the potential downside in equities from here. Uh, obviously the Fed is in there buying um, treasuries and the Fed wants uh, treasuries lower in yield from where they are now. Uh, Ten-year yields trading around the 185 level so some pretty ex excellent opportunities for adding duration to portfolios at the moment um, uh, and not getting caught up with the exuberance at the moment. I think uh, the opportunities for investors are, are quite large in the fixed income market right now. Uh, given we've had a good rally, this is a good uh, opportunity to switch more into uh, fixed rate debt and allow uh, protection from any downside in equity markets going forward. What if, though, um, the U.S. surprises us all that the politicians sort out the debt ceiling yeah. um, and the, the, uh, the spending cuts at the last minute, as they seem to, and, and economic growth uh, does continue to, to improve uh, throughout the year then in the U.S.? What, what happens then? Well, if, if that, oh, that's a bit of a Goldilocks scenario, but I suppose that's uh, one of the scenarios that is possible. So we probably would see um, uh, Treasury yields uh, uh, grind a little bit higher from where they are, but uh, overall we're not expecting uh, that sort of scenario to occur. I think a more realistic one is where the US uh, flips around from perceptions of uh, reasonable growth to uh, negative growth for the year. So. That would imply equities should be quite volatile this year. A another repeat of 2012 where we get uh, quite a lot of volatility but not that much capital gain. Okay. Um, I guess where else can you look then um, in terms of those fixed income markets? Um, I mean, is it, is it worth uh, looking over some of the corporates or um, uh, particularly European peripheral uh, mm. debt, uh, Asia? Where else can you? Well, some, some of the corporate debt that's available in Australia is quite attractive right now. We've got some uh, corporate inflation linked bonds over 4.5% real with, with a prospect of an average cash rate of around 275 for 2013. These bonds are, are very attractive, and I think by the end of the year, a lot of the value that's in these corporate bonds will be eliminated as people just uh, chase extra yield. We've seen a lot of investors. Uh, go to the equity market to, tr to try to buy um, equities that look like bonds but there, there's that underlying risk with those securities um, and the prospect of particularly with regard to the banks that payout ratio being cut uh, not immediately but uh, over time uh, with slow gr credit growth there's not much uh, a prospect for those payout ratios to be maintained so eventually dividends will be cut and that should uh, uh, lead to uh, lower equity prices for those banks. What about sort of the term deposit rates on offer? Because obviously there's a lot of um, mm. investors certainly that we hear from who, who yep. are wondering what to do with their term deposits that are coming up. Um, I mean, should they be going for, you know, fixing it at 4.6% at, at, at five years? I mean, what, what's sort of the thinking in terms of that? Uh, there's been some very good uh, offers from the regional banks uh, of late, uh, you know, 90 days, 
in the four and a half, four, four point six region. So there's some still some quite good offers out there, but the major banks uh, spreads have come in quite substantially, and we don't expect that uh, that will change. So I think um, if you're looking at uh, term deposits, you've really got to consider the regional banks, and there's some really good opportunities out there. But you have to be uh, have to be fairly careful on your rate and uh, look around and compare between those uh, regional banks. I mean, because what's your thinking on, on what we're going to see with um, the, the competition for those term deposits and, and also the RBA um, policy decisions over 2013? Because, I mean, it, it, we seem to hear such different views. Some saying, look, it's going to go to 2%, others yeah. saying, no, we think the RBA will just hold fire. Look, I think, the, I think uh, to some extent both of those views are correct. We're, we're thinking that the RBA will um, evaluate what it's already done uh, over the first part of 2013. But as unemployment uh, tends to tick up and the uh, mining sector growth is, remains quite slow and construction doesn't pick up that much, the pressure on the RBA will be to ease. Obviously with the Australian dollar above or around 105, there's a lot of pressure on the export sector right now and um, I, I think that would eventually force the RBA to ease towards 2.5 by the end of 2013. So roughly averaging 2.75 for the whole of uh, 2013. All right. Dr. Stephen Nash, thank you so much for your thank time you. as always.